Jesse Ryder claimed a vital fifer as Essex did just what they had to do on the opening day of the must-win LV County Championship game with Leicestershire at Grace Road, a day which went very well for the visitors. First up, James Foster called correctly at the toss and inserted on a green pitch. And after Greg Smith and Angus Robson saw out the first five overs in making 22 runs... Robson became the first of Ryder's wickets after being trapped in front for a couple. David Masters then joined in in the next over by finding the edge of Ned Eckersley's bat as he was on his way for a duck. Now a rarity, a dropped catch by Foster which gave Smith a life off Masters. It didn't matter too much however as the batsman was heading back to the pavilion on 26 when the keeper made amends for his error. 34 for 3 became 43 for 4 when Ryder cut one back to bowl Josh Cobb for 2. And Leicestershire were in a muddle once again when Ryder removed Niall O'Brien who was bang in front on 4. Both Ryder and Masters are economical in their run-ups and that allowed them to bowl 22 overs between them unchanged with some unplayable deliveries produced from time to time. Batting against them was certainly no easy task. Ryder doesn't use up too much energy in his run-up and now into his 11th over he grabbed a fourth wicket as Rob Taylor gave his away, tamely edging to Tom Wesley. Ryder used the surface superbly and for the third time this season he was celebrating a fifer as more movement did for Jigger Naik. Masters came off with figures of 2 for 21 from 11 overs to be replaced by Graham Napier, whose introduction into the attack induced some panic in the running. Ollie Freckingham got away with that, but he was soon on his way, Foster's one-handed approach this time paying dividends after a juggle. So Leicestershire went to lunch on 90 for 8, Ryder's opening spell bringing him 5 for 50 from 14 overs, the best figures of his career. He took a well-earned breather into the second session and Dan Redfern began to make the most of that. He had outshone his teammates to prove that this was not a minefield. He even helped himself to a 6 off a misdirected Napier delivery. The former Derbyshire player was celebrating a fifth 50 of the championship summer when he collected a couple off Napier next ball to be raising his bat after 65 balls at the crease. As well as that maximum, the talented 24-year-old had also struck six fours. Without him, Leicestershire would have struggled to make it even into three figures, such had been the dominance of the visitors. Alas for Redfern, he was left stranded on 54 after Charlie Shrek, having helped out with 16, was bowled by Napier who then did the same to last man Atif Sheikh after he raced to 12. In only 36 overs and 4 balls, Leicestershire were all out for 138. Three bowling bonus points quickly in the bank for Essex. It had all gone their way thus far and that trend continued when Wesley was dropped by Smith off Shrek before he troubled the scorers. Essex had started this match with four wins from their last five, but still needed to be victorious in their last two as well, as they began this round of fixtures 22 points behind Hampshire, the only two teams left who could be joining Worcestershire in the top division next summer. Wesley was started to make the most of his life, until on 24 and the total on 47, he was LBW to Taylor, a wicket which just set back Essex's advances. Taylor had to wait only three more balls for his next success. Jake Micklebrook quickly on his way back to the shed. Nick Brown has good memories of being in the East Midlands. He struck back-to-back -back hundreds in Derby and he was again looking good as his side were looking to be well ahead of their opponents by the end of the first day. Things were not going so well for Hampshire in their match with Kent. But after getting to 44, Brown nicked off to Shrek and left with his side 43 runs behind with three wickets now lost. A second successive wooden spoon is a certainty for Leicestershire who probably can't remember what winning a four day game feels like. They would have been hopeful of ending another disappointing home campaign with something to smile about 
but already that was going to be difficult to comprehend as Foster and Ravi Bapara now batted their side into the lead. The Essex skipper picking up from where he left off against Kent last week when he made a ton. This shot for six off Nate did put his side ahead and having won their last match in a fraction over two days, the upwardly mobile Essex were getting themselves into a position to do the same again. They really couldn't have had much of a better day. Foster and Bapara taking their partnership to 58 by the close, which came a little early because of rain, with both men into the 30s. Already, Leicestershire have it all to do to prevent a ninth defeat this summer. They probably can't wait for the season to end. With Foster on 36 and Bopara on 33, Essex finished the day on 153 for three, and that already gives them a lead of 15 runs, one they will look to build on substantially on day two. Getting to 400 for maximum bonus points will be the next thing on their minds. <laughs>